after um, the Attorney General Barr says that there was no evidence of collusion, conspiracy, or coordination, and there was no obstruction of justice, you're very upset because the, the media is reporting on that, and you're like, no, 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 no. What I actually said was there was no evidence of collusion, cooperation, or conspiracy, and I don't know about obstruction of justice. Maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. That's what your your report said, but that, but he's saying there's no obstruction of justice, and there, he's saying the the president fully cooperated, and you're like, well, he partially cooperated. So the fact that that was being reported the wrong way, this was a big problem for you. Yet for two years, when you knew more than any other human being on the planet knew that this was complete bullshit, when the media was reporting that um, Donald Trump was a traitor to his country, guilty of treason, and a puppet of the Russians. That didn't bother you. No, he wasn't concerned about the media. That Right, that's, that's, that's not, not your his role job. anymore. That's not, his job so, is never to be concerned with the media. <laughs> it seems like Mueller's problem here is that while he's not recommending to indict uh, Donald Trump on anything... And he didn't recommend to indict anyone on anything having to do with anything that happened before the election that wasn't like some financial crime from way before the election having nothing to do with the Trump administration at all. His problem is that you didn't trash Trump at all. You didn't give the media any red meat to keep trashing Donald Trump. To me, this was the – if there was ever any um, uh, suspicion – that Mueller was what people were claiming he is. Mueller's this great, by the books, man of integrity and principles, and he's just going to go in there and do his job and represent the people. That has been smashed to smithereens. This guy is a political actor, just like the vast majority of the higher ups of the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, all those guys. Um, now, the other element that's kind of interesting, and you sent me a Wall Street Journal article that was talking about this, and this is something that I've mentioned on the show before, but I think the, I, I think that a big part of this whole Trump Russia investigation and the the um the, the, this whole thing, well, I, I think, like I said, number one was this was um to pin Trump in. And not allow him to do what he ran on, to to end these wars. Like Donald Trump in the campaign said, wouldn't it be nice if we could work with the Russians, get out of Syria, stop spending all this money, which by the way, stop spending all this money means AKA dry up the military industrial complex gravy train. That's what the money is spent on, right? Um, so we could stop spending all this money. We could work with Russia, have detente with Russia, and not fight in these stupid wars that do nothing but waste money and destroy nations and get a bunch of our and other people killed. So that was what he was running on. Now, if if for uh, two years, every day in the media, they're saying that you're in bed with the Russians, makes it kind of hard to work with the Russians. And every time, and if you just look at when the media would go to its highest level of just insanity. It would be when Donald Trump said anything nice about Putin. If he ever complimented Putin, it was like, oh, look at him. He's praising Putin. Look at him. What does Stephen Colbert say? He's, he's a cock holster for Putin. He's the fuck, like these weird things that you would think the left comedians aren't supposed to say, like cock holster. Isn't that kind of like a fucking homophobic slur? But whatever. Um, you know, I think it's a great term, but I'm just saying uh, that doesn't seem like they're supposed to think it's a great time. Um, but so that's when they would go their craziest and they put all this pressure and it worked. It made him more and more adversarial with Russia because he didn't want to seem like, you know, he was in bed with them. Um, which maybe that's a homophobic slur too. I don't know. Anyway, the point is that was a big part of it was that I think they saw Donald Trump as this wild man who was not controllable and could maybe – turn on the military industrial complex and end and, and the gravy train. But I think also a big part of it is that there were real people who committed serious crimes who Donald Trump was a threat to. And do, there, it, it doesn't surprise me that people like Clapper and Bolden are, uh, excuse me, uh, Clapper and Brennan are coming out in the media, just relentlessly trashing Donald Trump, pushing this Russia, uh, you know, 
hoax pushing this bullshit, this, this complete nonsense that Donald Trump is is working for the Russians. I mean, Clapper is a guy who lied to Congress about an illegal spying program. And Brennan is a guy who, you know, actually committed treason and was in bed with Al Qaeda and ISIS. Um, so, you know, it seems like there's something there. Now, now what's going on with Barr? You know, it's not exactly clear to me. Barr is a Bush guy. Barr is a guy who worked for George H.W. Bush, who uh, contributed to the campaign of Jeb Bush. He's not exactly a Trumpian. You know, he's not like a Trump fanboy. But I think, I'm starting to think that what's going on with, with Bill Barr is that he is... Um. He's a Justice Department guy who's been the head of the Justice Department on two different occasions, who's been in there his whole life, kind of knows the inner workings of the scene, and he doesn't like what they're doing. Like, he's, it, it seems more and more like his thing, it's not what the media is telling you. Which, uh, the media is telling you it's like, oh, he's just, you know, he's sold his soul for Donald Trump. He's basically Donald Trump's slave. He'll do whatever he wants. He's just, what you know, they keep saying this thing. Um, on, in the mainstream media where they'll go, this is an attorney general who was handpicked. And it's like, well, you could just say this is an attorney general because they're all handpicked. That's how attorney generals get their job. They're appointed by the president. That's always been true. So, okay, maybe there's a problem with that system, but that's true for every single attorney general. That's not new for this guy. They say it like it's something about him. Hey, this this don't forget you know, this was a hand picked attorney general. I like general. that standard. Let's have no more unelected officials. Yeah, we'll never right. have to deal with the Kissinger again. Let's right, do exactly. That. Never Timothy Geithner. Never a guy at the Federal Reserve. These fucking people at the well, Supreme that's right. Court. I mean, the, the Let's Federal Reserve. Them. Well, it's it, Let's it is. Let's vote on all of them. Let's put it in the hands of the idiots. But by the way, that's a, that's a great example you say right there because anytime anyone with any inkling toward oh maybe we should be on a gold standard or maybe the Federal Reserve does too much or maybe they keep interest rates too low or anyone who even hints in the direction that we'd like, they go, we have to maintain the independence of the Fed. But wait a minute, every Fed chairman is handpicked. Every one of them. But, right, so what? what is this? All of a sudden, this this guy is a hand-picked attorney general. But So what they're saying is basically, oh, and, and you've heard this, by the way, it's really amazing to me, just a quick aside, that the, the candidates running for Democrat, they seem to all repeat talking points to a T. And Democrats in general. It's like, you, you guys, like, look, when the talking points get sent out to you, Next time, just a, a word of advice to try to help my enemy. How about you just put at the bottom of the talking points, put this into your own words. Don't repeat verbatim because you guys are starting to sound like robots. With the exception of Bernie Sanders, everyone, and, and of course Tulsi Gabbard, every one of the Democratic candidates and every Democrat in general, they say the exact same thing. And this happens over and over and over again. When Trump declared that um, – go, go, Tucker Carlson runs some clips about this stuff. I think Hannity does as well. But go look at like when Trump declared the state of emergency on the border. Go look at how many people use the term manufactured crisis. Every single one of them. This is a manufactured crisis. This is a manufactured crisis. Okay, so the term that everybody's been using with Attorney General Barr, the term everybody's been using is – He's acting like the president's lawyer. That's that's everybody's term. They are all saying it. You're you're working on behalf of Donald Trump, not the Justice Department. You're so that's their talking point. Oh, he's just working on behalf of Donald Trump. Seems to me that what's actually going on here is that he's critical of what the deep state did to a guy who's running for president. Now, this happens every now and then um, in these positions where there'll be somebody who actually believes the hype. Like, maybe they don't completely... You know, I always say, like, the state is the mafia masquerading as a human rights organization. Well, they kind of know it's a little mafia-esque, but they still kind of believe the human rights organization part. They're like, well, we're a human rights organization that just has to act like a mafia a little bit, but we're not just the mafia pretending to be a human rights organization. So they kind of believe, like... Well, this is America and we have a constitution and, you know, the president is duly elected and the president blah, 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 you know, 
all men are created equal and something like that, you know? So I think what's going on is that the attorney general is like, yeah, this is not okay. What, what you had were these deep state figures who hate the president spying on him because they hate him. Not for any legitimate reason, because he said in his first testimony in Congress, not this last one, that he was like, yeah, the president was spied on. And he said, you know what? We're going to look into whether that was done the right way or not. And this is what's generating all of the hate against him. It's not anything about his, his summary being wrong. It's not anything about him working for Donald Trump. It's the fact that he's a threat to these people. And now all of the anger... All of the, the laser focus rage is turned on Barr. He's dealing with all of it. He should uh, step down. He should be removed from his office. Blah, 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 blah. It's all this stuff. And why is this? Well, part of it is the obvious you know, political reason. Trump got off. The Mueller report didn't deliver the way they wanted it to. You know, that's just what happened. Um but part of it, so, you know, you blame somebody for, that's why, it's because the attorney general covered it up or something like that. Um, but part of it is that I think a lot of these people realize that they committed very, very serious crimes. And it's kind of like going after the president of the United States and missing. You know, it's like, you know, when they say you, if you swat a bee, you better kill it. Because mm -hmm. you, you don't kill it, you might get stung. And going against the president of the United States and missing like this, you could get yourself in some trouble. And if you've committed very, very serious crimes, which a whole lot of these people have. By the way, I'm running off the crimes. And this is something you always got to keep in mind when you're talking about the deep state. I'm running off the crimes that we know of. Uh, imagine what we don't know that the CIA has done. I, I, you know, I mean, if all the details really came out about this, the spying on Donald Trump, imagine how many people in there have committed very serious crimes. It's quite possibly a whole lot of them. And now the idea that you got an attorney general who's saying we're looking into you next. That, see, that guy's got to be publicly tarred and feathered now. So that's what's happening.